So today I'm talking about a Nissan with the P0171 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. So what is a Nissan P0171 code? Was a System 2 Lean Bank 1. And what does this mean? Well, the onboard computer seems too much air going into the engine and not enough gas. So it's seeing the air-fuel ratio mixture is off. So it's going to have to be troubleshooted to know why. And this can be a problematic code many times since there's so many different things that can cause this. So I'm going to break down each thing that you go and check and how you go about narrowing it down and finding out what the problem is. And so some of the possible causes of this, well, it could be a faulty mass airflow sensor, a vacuum leak, a fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, clogged fuel filter, an injector, bad oxygen sensor, clogged catalytic converter, and possibly a bad ECM. And so the first thing to do is to locate the bank one on your engine. If you just have a four cylinder, it won't matter. Since a four cylinder engine is only going to have one bank, but if you have a six cylinder engine, then you're going to have two banks. And so bank one is always going to be the side of the engine with the number one one cylinder so for example this is a 2002 nissan frontier six cylinder engine and the number one cylinder is on the left side so this is bank one right here and this right side would be bank two so just google for your particular engine the firing order or the cylinder location and find the number one cylinder and you'll find bank one and that'll be the side of the engine that's getting the wrong air fuel ratio mixture and so the first thing to go and check is going to be the mass airflow sensor this will be located up by the air box where the air filter goes. And what this does is it just reports back to the onboard computer how much oxygen is going into the engine, which is very important for the computer to calculate the air fuel ratio mixture. And so if this goes bad or gets dirty or anything like this, then it can throw off all that data and cause a problem. So first thing you do is go check this out. Quite often they just get dirty and they just need to be clean, but they can't go bad. It might need to be replaced. There's some different ways you go about testing these if you want to, but first thing to go and check is going to be the mass airflow sensor. And so once you check that out, if you check out the map sensor and that all looks good, then the next thing to go and check out is going to be a fuel related problem. Now this could be a few different things. It could be the fuel pump. It could be the fuel pressure regulator. It could be the fuel filter. So you could go through and you could check each component individually. You could replace the fuel filter so that's part of regular maintenance, especially if it hasn't been changed in a while. And then you could go through and you could test out the fuel pressure regulator. Quite often when the fuel pressure regulator fails, you'll have a longer start time because all the gas pressure is not being held up to the engine and all the gas is leaking back into the gas tank. So there's some different ways you can go in, out to check each one of these individual components. A really quick way that you could test this is just to use a fuel pressure test gauge, which is really easy to use. You get these at any automotive store or online, and they basically just hook up to the fuel rail on the engine. There'll be a port and you just hook to it and you find the PSI that the fuel is supposed to be at for your particular engine and you just see if that it's running at that pressure. So say your engine is supposed to be running at 55 PSI and you test the pressure, but it's running low. It's running like around 30 or 40 PSI. Then you know that like something like that fuel pump is weak or something's blocking it like the clogged fuel filter or something like this. That's a real quick way just to see if the fuel system's working. But if it is running correctly, then you know that that's not the problem and you can move on to the next step. So doing a fuel pressure test is a really quick way that you could just rule that out. Or you could go through each one of those components, however you want to do it. You could go through and check the fuel pump, the fuel pressure regulator, and replace the fuel filter. But the next thing to do would be go check out the fuel delivery system. And so if that looks good and there's no issues there, it's got good fuel pressure and everything like that, then the next thing to go and check is going to be for a vacuum leak because a vacuum leak will cause an issue and is a common cause for this code to pop up. And there's some different methods you can go about trying to find a vacuum leak. Sometimes you can hear it if it's really super loud but often they're not so loud so they're kind of hard to spot and so what a lot of mechanics will do is that they'll use like a liquid spray that's flammable and they'll go around and they'll try to spot where they think the leak's at with the engine running and they'll spray right where they think the leak is at and if the engine idles up then they know they found it there's also a smoke machine method where basically you feed smoke into the manifold and then you just look and try to see where the smoke comes out this is the method i like to use and is the best method i think you can get these smoke machines online for like 50 60 dollars or you can even build your own there's some good youtube videos on how you can build one for like 10 15 bucks but basically however you want to do it the next thing to go and do is to go look for a vacuum leak and so if you've gone through that and you can't find no vacuum vacuum leaks then the next thing to move on to is going to be an oxygen sensor and just like the MAF sensor this is very important because it tells the computer how much oxygen has been burnt off after combustion and so if one of these go bad then it can throw off the computer since the computer is just getting bad data usually when this happens it's going to be the upstream oxygen sensor but it can also sometimes be the downstream oxygen sensor and you can test these if you want to there's some good youtube videos on that so the next thing to go and do would be to test these oxygen sensors and be sure that they're good because that could definitely cause a p0 171 code. And so if you've gone it through and you check that out, those oxygen sensors test good. Then the next thing is going to be a bad fuel injector. And one of those injectors on bank one might have failed. 
And so there's some different ways you go about testing fuel injectors if you wanted to. There's a lot of good YouTube videos on that. Or you could just swap them all out on bank one and just be done with it. But the next thing to go and check would be for a bad fuel injector. And the next thing on the list is going to be a bad catalytic converter. And a common symptom of a bad catalytic converter is that when you go to step on the gas, it doesn't have a lot of power. It kind of bogs down and takes a little while to get going. And again, there's some different ways you go about testing if it's got a bad catalytic converter or not. But the next thing to go and check would be that the catalytic converter has gone back. And last up is just going to be a bad onboard computer, ECM. And while not very common, it can happen sometimes. And so if you've gone through and you checked everything else out and you just can't solve this problem, then you might want to go and look at the onboard computer because there might be some kind of problem with it and it might need to be replaced. And so that's basically it. I just want to go over some of the common causes of fixes for a Nissan P0171 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.